Come on. Come on. Don't be so bashful. Hi guys, we are getting ready to start our spring flower bed cleanup and I thought it would be fun to come out here and just kind of take a walk around the gardens and just kind of see the current state of affairs and see where everything is at before we go in bed by bed and clean everything up and get it ready for the current growing season. And what better place to start than the butterfly garden because look at this. The daffodils are in bloom. I feel like I'm late to the game in cleanup, but we are literally at the first week of March and we've already got blooms everywhere. I'm like, okay, look at the size of these. Aren't they pretty? So everything is starting to wake up in here including some weeds and some unwanted grass. So I'm gonna have to come in and weed this whole area. And this is right over here, this is the Caryopteris. And I am not sure what happened to this thing. It was fully branched out, but I think between the squirrels using this as a launching pad and Shuey running into it while chasing the squirrels, I think it's seen better days. So I think it's still alive, but I may dig it up and put it in a container and just kind of let it heal a little bit. But all in all, everything over here is looking good. We've starting to get some blooms on the Budlias, the Salvias and the Veronicas are starting to wake up. We're starting to see new leaves over here. The sedum has definitely got a whole bunch of new growth. So we're gonna have to come in here and kind of just chop this whole thing down. I've got quite a few weeds popping up in here. Like these honestly are so annoying, but they're so easy to kind of pull. You kind of just gotta make sure you get the root. <clears throat> Hydrangea is looking good. The Pugster Blue Budlias are looking good. Shasta Daisies probably need a good cleanup. Some of these leaves are just scraggly. And then just kind of get rid of a lot of the leaves and some of the mulch in here because this is pine bark mulch, but I'm not sure what happened with this batch last year, but we have a lot of big wood chips left all throughout here. Clean up all the leaves and show show the rock border again look at all these look at all these daffodil buds coming up so pretty i guess i better get rid of that the sweet spires haven't broken dormancy yet they're just kind of hanging out here and we're right over here at the end of the butterfly garden and the beginning of the swale and this is the area that we started planting our mixed border hedge. And this is going to be, honestly, the death of me. Look at all of this. Look at all these weeds trying to push through. There's huge drifts of them over here. And look, they're trying to crowd out the little hydrangea. This is Lesser Celandine, also known as Fig Buttercup. And it is an invasive little bugger that spreads by seed. It spreads underground by rhizome and by tuber. So this is one of those noxious weeds where you can't, you can't really treat it unless you treat it with like a broadleaf um, pesticide. And I really don't want to do that because that will kill everything. Not only the weeds, but all of the grass and I'm afraid it's gonna, it's going to kill a lot of the plants. So the only way to get rid of this is to actually dig it up. If you don't wanna go the systemic route with the pesticides, the only thing you can do is dig it up. And I think that's what I'm gonna try and attempt little by little. I'll probably come out here with some music and set up a camera and just take my trowel and just kind of dig each, each weed up and then kind of backfill it uh, with some fresh topsoil but I kind of want to just 
see how far I can get because this stuff is just starting to take over and it's popping up in random places in the lawn as well. And you can see like it is a thick, dense mat. It grows sideways, it grows up and it's just, oh, it's just a pain you guys. Anyways, okay, so we've got the Emerald Green Arborvita, the little lime hydrangeas, a little globe arborvitae over here. It's got a little winter burn on it, but you can see right inside. It's got some fresh growth kicking in. Just kind of need to come in here and clean it all up. Another Emerald Green Arborvitae. And you can see right over here, I've got some garden stakes. We set up six garden stakes or four or five garden stakes kind of like right there, right there. And this is kind of like where we mapped out where the shed would be. We have it with the backside facing our back fence. The front would be right here. We're trying it this way. And we may end up having it come this way with the back of the shed facing our neighbors this way and the front right over here. We've got the two three by six raised garden beds you can see the squirrels have been having a field day in here. So I just kind of need to come in here and top them all up whenever I'm ready to plant. But they look pretty good. They just need a little fluffing. Over here, we've got our mint plant that is starting to break dormancy. You can see right over there, it's waking up. We've got some new growth coming in. And we've also got a shoey coming to inspect. Shoo -shoo. Give me a kissy. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Got our false cypress that has been wintering over over here in its little nursery container and it's doing really well. Got to figure out a place for it, but look how green it is. <laughs> so deceiving. Okay, shoe. Our blueberry bush is all butted up. Can you guys see that? Look at all that. I need to come in here and kind of clean it up a little bit. Give it some fertilizer. Oops, sorry, Shishu. Our fig tree over here is already starting to send out new branches over here. And this is the main, this is the main leader. And then it kind of branched off over here. I think the main leader up here kind of died. So it's not looking too healthy here. So I don't want to cut it yet. So I'm just going to kind of watch it. I will come in here and remove all of these suckers though. We have another little fig tree over here, a budlia. Here is our bed of garlic and it looks like every single one of the garlic bulbs came up. I'm so excited for this. This is so fun. Don't really need to do too much here. I'm going to remove the netting. I kept this on all winter long just to kind of keep the squirrels away from it but I think it's time to remove it and kind of fluff up the soil, give it a little um, a little dose of garden tone, some land and sea compost, water it all in, and it'll be its spring feeding. These two beds over here, well, these are the squirrel's playground. <laughs> Nothing but lumps and bumps throughout all of this, and look how much, look how much the soil settled in one season. That's like two, three inches. So I'm definitely gonna have to come in here, fluff it up, maybe add a little bit more soil. And then when we are ready to plant, I'll amend it with Biotone starter fertilizer, land and sea compost. Haven't quite figured out what I wanna put in these two beds. I'm thinking we just planted onions. So I may fill this bed up with the onions. This could be, I don't know. I think I'm saving the two big beds over there for tomatoes and whatnot. Maybe sweet potatoes. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I have a little bit of time. And now we come up to our fig tree and it is starting to wake up. It looks like it. Some of these branches are a lot greener. I'm starting to see some buds over here, but it's definitely gonna need a little bit of cleaning up, but I can't do anything to it yet because this tree is gonna actually require quite a bit of TLC this year. So I noticed on one of the bigger tree trunks, we had a huge wound um, right on the outside of it. A lot of the bark was missing. Let me show you real quick. 
Take a look at that, you guys. I noticed this a few weeks ago and my heart just stopped. So I had my arborist come out here and inspect the tree. So the damage to the bark is from a bark beetle, a bark beetle infestation. So we got a treat for that. But he also said that there is a soil borne fungus going on underneath the soil. Uh, phototheria, phototheria, I think is what he called it. I'll, I'll look it up and put the name on the screen. So we have to treat it systemically. So I had to contact a landscaping company that's registered with our county because you have to be registered in Montgomery County to be able to apply a lot of these more commercial systemic insecticides and fungicides. So they're going to be coming out once we get on the schedule. They're going to be coming out. They're going to scrape a lot of the soil back because the arborist said, and this is his opinion, but I told him about the retaining wall and all the construction and he thinks a lot of the soil may have settled all around here. And what happened was the trunk of the tree sank a little bit and kind of went a little too low from the soil line. So between that and the soil staying too wet, he thinks that is what may have triggered a lot of these symptoms that we were seeing in the tree. So he recommended scraping out a lot of the soil, letting the roots breathe, discarding that soil, and then the landscaping company that's coming out here, they're going to apply a systemic insecticide to the roots and kind of just get everything nice and watered in and then I will come in here and remove that trunk with the open wound because they told me that it eventually will just stress the tree out. So just get rid of that branch. And I'm okay with actually doing that because it's growing inwards. Let me show you. So this is the branch that they want me to remove. So I'm gonna take it all the way down to here and it's growing in towards the center of the tree. So by eliminating this whole branch and this, it'll open up a lot more for airflow and light because this thing got so full over last season, like the interior, we couldn't see any sunlight getting through. So I think between all of the rain and the lack of sunlight, this whole area just stayed too moist. And I think you can kind of still see like right around the trunk area. So they're gonna be digging all of this up, discarding it, applying this inset the systemic fungicide, insecticide, and then watering it in, and then we'll just kind of leave it be. And I think this season, we're just gonna have to sacrifice any fruit because I think that systemic insecticide will stay in there, in the tree, in the fiber of the tree for like 12 weeks. So I don't wanna risk eating any fruit that's contaminated. So it's a wash this season for any fruit. I'm okay with it though. If it saves the tree, I'm happy. And right along the retaining wall, <laughs> We've got all of our bulbs coming up. Those are the alliums. And I honestly forgot what else we planted. We had so much going on. I think there was anemones and something else and I can't remember. And a lot of weeds too. Button weeds. That thing. I think I'm going to have to come in with some plastic edging and get a strip of it going on in here because I can see some of the grass is trying to scooch in here. Some of it is from a lot of the seed that they put down last year. The rain washed it away, but I kind of want to keep it as defined as I can. Okay, let's go to the front yard now. So here is our sky pencil holly hedge and I'm going to have to do the same thing out here. I've got some grass growing in here and I know I was expecting this because I knew a lot of the seed had gotten washed into the bed. So this will just be pretty easy to come in here and just kind of remove. It just comes right out. We'll just set that there. But all in all, this area is looking pretty good. I mean, other than just cleaning up the cleaning up the bed with all the grass everything is everything is good look how much they've grown i'm gonna come in here and give them a little haircut too and some fertilizer what is that honestly you guys everything is just waking up hand pull hand pull all the weeds but yeah Pretty happy with this whole section right here. Walls holding up well. Sky pencil holly's growing. What more could you ask for? <laughs>
And here we are in the front flower bed. There's our fig tree for a point of reference. Here's our limelight hydrangeas. We're gonna have to come in here and clean them all up. And oh my God, look at that. I'll get that later. But the hydrangea blooms, I left some of them on all season. They look good. I don't see, oh, they're starting to bud. We're gonna have to get in here and clean it all up. Little limes over here. You can't really see it because they blend in, they blend in with the mulch. And see what I mean? Some of these pieces are just huge. Like, look at that. Isn't that pretty? This I think may have been mislabeled. It was labeled a Danica Arborvitae, but I don't know if Danicas are supposed to be this yellow. There's our Laura Petalum over here. Oh, I see buds on it. Can you see that? There's buds. This blooms a bright pink. This is the Proven Winners Jazz Hands Pink. It's beautiful. Our Budlias. Helen von Stein lamb's ear. I really need to come in here and clean all that up. But look at the budlias. They've got so many leaves starting from the bottom. Oh my God, look, what a surprise. Our agastache. Our little dwarf spruce. The nephophia. Need to come in here and just take that all the way down. These leaves actually, these top leaves, they never, they stayed all season long. And they typically do that here. We don't ever really lose all of the leaves to the Budlias. Remember our fall winter container? It's still here. Still looking beautiful over on this side. But this has just really got to come out. And sometimes you just can't get to things like when you want to. So you just get to them whenever you can. All right, I'm just noticing this on this boxwood. What is going on here? It's weird because this whole section right here, this is a green velvet boxwood and everything looks good except for this one section. But if you look closely, it's pushing buds everywhere. So I don't know what's going on with it. So we're in the other front flower bed. Here is my Budlia that has been wintering over in its nursery container up here and it is starting to push out some new leaves. We're gonna have to come in here and take a lot of these old blooms out. The Scentlandias are looking good. This is supposed to be deciduous, but it's held on to a lot of its leaves. So this will be fun to kind of see what it does this year. It'll actually be fun to see what everything does after being in the ground for a whole year. Our Dwarf Euonymus is looking good. Sky Pencil Holly is looking good. More Nephophia and Bobo Hydrangeas that we have to cut back. I don't see any blooms on these. Some more Budlias. They're looking good. A lot of our bulbs are starting to come up out here. I think we had anemones and I can't remember what else we have. Our Dwarf Colorado Blue Spruce is looking good. Everything just kind of needs to be cleaned up and fertilized. More boxwoods, Scentlandias. Our golden emerald arborvitae. More nephophias over here that are in a serious need of a cutback because they're already pushing new growth over here too. Another dwarf euonymus. And we end up at the front gate with the arborvitae hedge. And they're looking good. They have a little bit of winter burn, kind of not winter burn, but they definitely have their little winter color on their tips. But for the most part, they're looking really good. I need to come in here and kind of remove a lot of this mulch because I had the brilliant idea last year of trying to help shade out some of this. Hi. I had the brilliant idea of trying to shade out some of the grass in the hopes of making the ring around the arborvitaes bigger. And apparently the grass was like, nope, not happening. So I just need to kind of come in here, scrape all the mulch out and just kind of redefine, redefine the rings a little bit. But 
It's looking pretty good. On the other side, we have our green velvet boxwood hedge looking beautiful. This is such a low maintenance hedge and it just goes all the way around. A couple of these get hit with the morning sun and they've got their new growth coming up. And we continue with the arborvitae hedge. And I can't really tell if they've put on any significant growth. I see them all the time. So they kind of look the same size to me. And we end up right where we started in front of the butterfly garden. And I'm really happy that I had a few minutes or that I took a few minutes to kind of walk around here and just kind of take a good long look at everything. That way, when I come in to do spring cleanup, I have a better idea of the points and the areas that I need to hit a little bit harder and focus on. And that, I think that just for me, gives me, kind of makes me feel a little better and gives me a little advantage over, you know, like, all of those weeds that I'm going to have to tackle one day, but I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.